Hi, I'm Heather French Henry, the host of Heart of Gold, a monthly program whose mission is to highlight examples of what makes Louisville, Kentucky the most compassionate city in the world, as declared by Mayor Greg Fisher. Compassion can take on many forms, ranging from individual acts of kindness to large scale nonprofit organizations. This series features local nonprofit organizations of all shapes and sizes, which are working to improve the quality of life for all Louisville citizens. Thank you for joining us and special thanks to WHS TV for generously producing this series. Our first segment features Mayor Greg Fisher's Give a Day Week of Service Compassionate Louisville Signature Compassionate Initiative, which is Mayor Louisville annual Give a Day Week of Service project that promotes volunteerism. This segment will introduce you to the Fuller Center for Housing, an organization that has benefited from volunteer efforts organized during Give a Day Week of Service, and to the Pedal Power Project, a volunteer effort that will collect and repair bicycles to donate them to local refugees through Kentucky Refugee Ministries. Both are great examples of Louisville's commitment to meeting the needs of our community through volunteerism. Give a Day 2015 Week of Service will take place from April 18th to the 26th. To learn more about these and many other volunteer opportunities, visit mygiveaday.com. Our guests are Brenda Frank, Special Assistant to the Mayor Fisher and Coordinator for City's annual Give a Day Week of Service initiative, Miss Brenda. We have Steve Morella with the Fuller Center for Housing. We have Conrad Bennett, a veteran and new homeowner, an Army veteran. Bob Collender with the Pedal Power Project and John Collinger from the Kentucky Refugee Ministries. Thank you all so much for joining us. Thank it's so Thank great you. to have you here. Thank you, Heather. And of course, Miss Brenda, you are going to be in hot seat first, of course, <laughs> um, since you are the go-to gal for the city. I mean, how does the city run without you, right? Oh, well, <laughs> sometimes I, I would like to find out. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about the mayor's uh, Give a Day Week of Service, which was conceived and how it works. Well, uh, to start it all off, the mayor, when he was first elected mayor, uh, during his first administration four years ago, four and a half years now, he made uh, Compassion one of his major initiatives. Uh, he made, you know, a healthier city, a more educated city, and a more compassionate city. And people kind of shook their heads and said, you know, what do you mean more compassionate city? So uh, what we did the very first, actually probably the first month that he was in office, we went out on a cold January day and got 800 people out doing something, you know, for somebody else. Well, one day wasn't good enough, so <laughs> we got to be into one week of service so that everybody in the city could start having, you know, time to do uh, some kind of service for someone else. Oh, that's excellent. You know, that's that snowball effect, you know, and it makes people feel good and they get to do great things for the community. What are some of the notable Give a Day projects um, and successes since its inception? Oh, goodness. We have one sitting right here. <laughs> we have many. Yeah, house. Yes, yes, about. Yes, absolutely. We love it when, you know, you can see somebody get a house uh, during our Give a Day right. and, and see the hard work that's gone into that. Last year, one of our most notable uh, things that happened, uh, there were over 200 beds that actually were made uh, in one day by volunteers and these beds were made for children who were sleeping on floors right here oh. in our own city and that only touched the surface. We hope to continue that. Uh, we've had Kroger stores to have, you know, we had the CEOs in for a conference. They had 5,000 of those uh, CEOs out at the fairgrounds uh, stuffing baskets for Dare to Care. Uh, we've got Humana that every year goes out and cleans up and, and helps with uh, playgrounds. Uh, there's just every kind of imaginable project uh, that a nonprofit may have. Uh, we have people the who people are eager to go. That's excellent. It's all about getting the community involved, right? And every year we get more and more. Uh, businesses and organizations and individuals. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the initiatives we've got here sure. tonight, which are so wonderful. Um, so, Steve, tell me a little bit about the Fuller Center and the work that you do. We're a faith-based, I, I, I like to say a faith-based ministry that uh, we're, uh, we take the boarded up and abandoned properties and we have over about 7,000 boarded up and abandoned homes in Louisville right now. But what we do with those homes is we we uh, renovate those homes totally for the homeless and the working poor people. We serve uh, an income level of 25 to 50 percent of the area median income, which basically says if you're a single person and you make minimum wage, you could qualify for a Fuller Center home. Oh, that's great. Best. And 
and those payments on those homes, we finance that ourselves for 20 okay. years, and their payments are 275 a month, including taxes and insurance. And you're so, an Air Force veteran, I, I understand, and I you had a great chance to partner with another veteran, Army veteran, uh, Mr. Conrad. Right. So uh, tell us a little bit about how you came to know each other and how Fuller House has impacted your life. Well, I think uh, me and my wife, we started uh, working in this garden. They, they, we had a garden called the, the Garden of, uh, of, of Hope. Okay. And uh, we started just working there. And um, what, 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 what really started just doing a volunteer work turned into something much more. And, uh, and uh, so we just started working there. And then I became aware of what was going on within, what's going on within the building which I was working in, which was called the Fuller Center. So as I work more and more, they start having these community fairs. And then through these community fairs, I start seeing the vision that came out of this. You know, the, the, the Christian people that were there, these, all these Christian people that was trying to help this, our, our small community. So I, I became involved in that. And when I became involved, uh, 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 at one particular time, I became a recipient, I mean, a candidate. That's the, that's the right word, a candidate for one of these homes that I've been hearing about. So through that, we just started to, uh, uh, doing, we start working on these homes, uh, for not only for only my home, but other people's homes. And we tried to do such a great job because I knew that by, not only by me receiving this house, that I was helping someone else receive one also. So it's not, it's not only that, but it's the affordability of, of being able to own your own home. It's and not it, beautiful. it must feel you know, good to honor you know, another you know. brother in service, right? Yeah, it does, mm -hmm. it does. You know, and we're a hand up, not a handout. Mm -hmm. And, and right. I've got to say mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, Conrad was one of the, the four veterans that we did houses for this past year. And uh, unfortunately, we lost one uh, to cancer about two weeks ago. But we've got another veteran who's waiting for us to get that house back to okay. put him in. And it looks like we're showing some video right now from one of the repairs. Of, of those homes. Right, right. This was, you know, it was really funny because we had the National Fuller Center um, build here in Louisville last year that that coincided with the Give a Day program. So we got a lot of these houses going, but we lacked about the last 15 to 20 percent. So it was great that the Give a Day was the following week so we could get those homes finished and put these folks in, in the homes. and. And we did uh, 15 houses this year. Excellent. Uh, so well, thank you so much for sharing your story, and thank you for serving our thank country. You, Absolutely, you. Mr. Conrad. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. And next to you is another wonderful gentleman, uh, Bob. Tell me a little bit about the Pedal Power Project. That's a lot of P's in there. <laughs> the Pedal Power P's. Project. <laughs> we can't keep it straight either. <laughs> by the way. Uh, Pedal Power is uh, sponsored by Beargrass Christian Church, and. Um, uh, Beargrass has been involved with Kentucky Refugee Ministries for several years. We have a long history of helping families when they arrive here in Louisville. Um, so a couple of years ago, we were asking uh, John at uh, Kentucky Refugee Ministries um, if there's anything else that Beargrass could do. And transportation is a major issue when the refugees come. And uh, they use the, the bus system as uh, uh, transportation, but they also need other help because the buses don't go everywhere. So we felt that, that uh, bicycles might be the answer. The buses will carry the bicycles. The refugees are very experienced riding bicycles. Uh, so we asked our church initially just to um, help donate some of the bicycles that are sitting around in garages and basements and attics. And they responded, and we thought the project would probably last a couple of months. And here we are two years later. And we've, we've actually repaired and... Um, and giving away 600 almost. Well, how can people get involved? Do you need people to donate bikes to help repair the bikes? Yes. Yes and yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, first of all, we have to we rely on the on the uh, charity of individuals who have bicycles that they want to donate, and uh, they can call the church at 896-1161, um, and. Uh, the drop-off point is in the back of the church property at a garage that's designated as a bicycle drop-off. Or we will um, call on our volunteers to go pick up bicycles. Uh, so either way, okay. uh, we, we want to get them. And then if, if somebody wants to help us um, fix up bicycles, we work most Wednesday evenings all year long and, um, and make the repairs. Or if they want to donate parts or helmets or locks or anything like that, it's helpful too. On the give a day, we're going to have a, 
a big repair affair on the 25th of April mm -hmm. where we hope to fix up hundreds of bicycles if we get those donated. So Excellent. So we have the yeah. House Ministry, we have a Bicycle Ministry. That's excellent. <laughs> now, John, uh, tell me about Kentucky Refugee Ministries. Um, you know, this program provides a great sense of freedom, certainly for the refugees that come to Louisville. And what types of situations are they escaping from? Uh, civil war, ethnic cleansing, persecution for political or religious or you know, ethnic uh, affiliations and a lot of our clients have been in refugee camps for prolonged periods over a decade. Some are urban refugees living without status in different countries of asylum. So some pretty tough uh, conditions. A lot of our clients have uh, experienced trauma or witnessed trauma. So, What type of impact has a program like the uh, PEDAL Power Project. I'm going to get that right. The Pedal Power Project had um, on your refugees. It's it's really the, the personal impact. Uh, we provide a lot of services, case management, access to medical care, housing, employment services, putting a lot of refugees to work, mental health. But what we're really trying to do is provide a warm welcome. It's it's more it's more than services. And I've seen. I've been with Bob so many times when he brings the, he and his crew, they bring the truck out full of bikes and sometimes we go to apartment complexes where the refugees live or sometimes at our office. And they've just arrived here. We picked them up at the airport. They just had a bag. Of, they didn't bring any belongings. They, they, and some resident of Louisville is bringing them these bicycles, giving them the bicycles. It's a very meaningful statement to them about what kind of people live in Louisville because they really don't know a lot about Louisville before they're coming here and some to some degree many of them have been sent here kind of uh, through the program so it, it has quite an impact. And Do you need more uh, bikes for adults or children or both? Both. We both. have a lot okay. of adults who need to run errands or get to work in a bicycle but I can tell you as you know the kids come here and they see other kids have a lot of things but their parents can't refugee parents can't afford to get them anything so it's it's me it's important for the parents well my kid has a bicycle and he can play in the neighborhood with the other neighbor kids mm -hmm. and that's a sense of belonging and, and being Excellent. part of the community well thank you for joining us today now miss brenda uh why don't you tell the folks again how people can donate bikes supplies and volunteer to help and give a day Okay, the best way to do this is, you've heard some of the great opportunities right here tonight, but is to go to our, to our website, www.mygiveaday.com, and you can see all the opportunities from all kinds of nonprofits. We have probably 200 or so that will be registered with opportunities. But we really, this year, are making our bike uh, program one of our major projects. But again, and if you want to just go out and do something in your own neighborhood, and have your own project, you can go into the website and sign up and say, you know, my organization did this. Oh, great. And, uh, so each community can have its own if there's not clean something up associated in your own with. Absolutely. Find your needs. Your neighbor may have, you know, right next door. You know, it'd be amazing how much you can do right in your own neighborhood. Well, and I certainly think the benefit of getting all of the community involved is teaching our children about giving back to the community so we can grow future generations that care about our community. I think I state this more often than not that the word community in the Webster's Dictionary means joint ownership. So it means we're all uh, exactly. certainly responsible. So my give a day, www.mygiveaday dot com. Mm -hmm. What an excellent way to teach our community and uh, teach people about giving back and truly fits with the compassionate Louisville model and methods. Absolutely, absolutely. There's no reason why that everybody during that week can't give find something. something to somebody. <laughs> Certainly, and the mayor will be out full force. I know he probably he, has a multitude of things. He's our greatest leader. He will be out at the sites. He was on top of the yeah, roof last was, year. Yeah. I mean, we had him working uh, for about three hours Helping last to build year. the house. And he did everything. He did drywall work. Yeah. He hung windows. He did. Oh, wow. Know, and I mean, he had he's built some new qualifications and accreditations yeah. into being yeah. a mayor, right? So yeah. they can put on his resume oh, later oh. on. <laughs> he's not, he makes many stops. He'll help and load those bicycles. Oh, that's there. excellent. Well, thank you all so much uh, for joining us. And uh, come back in a few moments as our second segment features a wonderful partnership for a compassionate Louisville.